Hi, everyone. I've been talking to a lot of small business owners dealing with the coronavirus and uh, and they're struggling. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. There's a lot of fear. Uh, there's a lot of tough decisions that are going to be made as a lot of these small business owners are uh, not only having to have to lay off many of their loyal employees, but also are going to, uh, in some cases, have to shut down completely. It's a scary time. And what I want to do is make sure that everybody understands that they're not alone and that if we work together, we can come out of this together and even stronger. So what I'm going to do with my podcast format is have three interviews a week with small business owners so that you can hear their story, how they're dealing with the coronavirus and the changes that they're making. Um, the reason why I want to make sure that we're doing this is because you are not alone. We are in this together, and I want to make sure that everybody understands small businesses are the engine of the economy. And right now, more than ever, we need to support each other because that's how we're going to get get through this. Uh, this is not going to last forever. It is going to be tough, and we're going to have to all make tough decisions. But after we get through this, we're all going to be stronger. And if we work together, it'll be easier. So I hope you enjoy the format. If you are enjoying this, please share this with friends, as well as if you know anybody who would want to be interviewed, please have them contact me. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. And start recording. All right, we are now recording. I'm here. Uh, I'm I'm talking to Nick Patillo, and he is the owner of several restaurants. Nick, why don't you tell everybody who you are and, and what, uh, sure. what the restaurants are? Sure, Tony. Uh, Nick Patillo, owner of Osteria 166 downtown Buffalo, uh, Bellagio in Ellicottville, and Occasions Catering, which is all over Western New York. And, and Nick, uh, obviously, with the coronavirus situation uh, right now, uh, are your restaurants open at all? No, we made the decision, the very difficult decision on uh, Sunday in Ellicottville, and then Monday when the governor made his initiative to close uh, at 8 p.m. on Monday uh, to close down um, completely. We, we batted down the hatches as best we could. We froze what we could freeze. Uh, it's pretty heartbreaking looking at, you know, close to 60 employees, the ones that I, I was able to see face to face, um, and, and telling them that I didn't have work for them. Uh, so what we did with all the food, all the perishable product was, um, we let our staffs basically go shopping and fill their, fill their coolers. Uh, -huh. uh, they were our first priority. Uh, and then we were able to give a substantial amount of food to response to love as well as the soup kitchen in uh, in Salamanca and Tina uh, Zerbi. And I apologize, I don't have the name of your group in front of me, but you're doing wonderful things. Well, that's nice that you did that for uh, your employees. So you said you had 60 employees? Rough, roughly 60. Uh, I just, I can't afford to keep them all working right now, but we're working diligently to, to find ways to change that. Yeah, well, I, I assume that uh, just, well, every restaurant and bar is having that same struggle and they're going to have to make a similar decision if they already haven't. Um, I know there were, there's a lot of great restaurants in the Western New York area. Uh, can you speak to that, Nick? Is like, how do you, and I know the margins are very slim in the restaurant industry. How, how do, what does it look like uh, after six weeks or eight weeks of this, do you think? I mean, who knows, really? Um, but I can tell you that I find it very doubtful that many independent restaurants can sustain four, five, six, seven, eight weeks without any revenue. Um, the delivery model is, uh, you know, in the curbside pickups, great. On the short term, what happens when people don't have any money? You know, um, where what's gonna what's gonna happen when we we've been in our homes for two, three, four weeks, and all the food that we bought from Wegmans is gone? I, I just don't know the answer, uh, but I can tell you that the talk of, of, of government bailouts and things like that for, what was it, $50 billion for the casino industry and, and you know, whatever for the airlines and the cruise ships, you know, the, the independent restaurant companies are, are the fabric, you know, the independent restaurant chains, or excuse me, not chains, um, are the fabric of our, our communities. Uh, and not much talk about helping us. I certainly 
want to, my, my first priority is certainly my family uh, and then my immediate employees, but then it's all of us. We're all in this together and, and we're, we're at a loss. We're all, we're all kind of just trying to figure it out right now. I just got off the phone with another operator. I'm, I talked to, no, no exaggeration, 20, 20 restaurant owners a day. Just what are you doing? How are you feeling? What's going on? Um, you know, we, we, we just don't know uh, where it's going to go. So it's, it's a minute to minute. Oh, that's a great idea. Let's try that. Or, you know, a fundraiser to try and help our staffs. There's a, there's a lot going on. Everybody wants to help, but it's, it's really kind of early. You know, nobody knows what's going to happen with the food supply chains. Uh, it certainly appears right now that there's going to be plenty of, you know, whatever chicken, but who really knows? Uh, the longer this goes, the longer shot that many of us will have of coming out of this. Yeah. Do you, do you see, are a lot of these restaurants going to survive after this or, or how do you see it? Or based I, on what you're already, I doing? wish I knew the answer. Uh, there's a, a great, um, article by Tom Colicchio, actually an interview, Tom Colicchio of Top Chef fame, if you will, um, that I believe his numbers were, he doubts that 75% of the restaurants will reopen uh, oh, wow. after this. I would, I would probably guess that's pretty aggressive. I, I would say, you know, 25 to 30% is a pretty reasonable expectation of not being able to reopen. Um, I, but no one knows that answer and, and it's a terrible thing to even think about, but it's real. And, and, you know, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm not one of those people uh, right now because of those people that, because of those 60 plus people that we spoke of. Uh, and then it's, you know, their families, their children, these, these people depend on us to, to put their kids through college and feed their kids. And, and it's, it's heartbreaking to not be able to help them. Um, you know, in the short term, we just don't know what we're going to do. We're just adapting day by day. Well, I, and I agree with you too. If there's going to be bailouts, uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent to small businesses. Uh, and uh, it doesn't sound at least at this point that that's where they're headed, but um, it's good to see that they're going to be sending money directly to uh, everybody in the United States. I would, I would hope that they uh, consider the small businesses as well. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I would love everybody to get that thousand bucks and and go, uh, you know, go pump it into the economy somewhere. Um, you know, the the salons, the everybody, everybody's in this. We're all scared to death of how we're going to continue on. It's certainly not just the restaurant business, um, but that's that's my angle. Uh, and before we go any further, I want to give uh, Com Cataracts Community Action a shout out. That was the 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 folks in Salamanca that we sent food to that I that I had misplaced the name. Um, but Tina Zerbian is working real hard with them and, and we're going to continue to help them any way we can as well. Excellent. That's, that's great that you're doing that. Thank you. Um, and uh, what, what, so what are you going to do now, Nick? What are you, what are you working on or how, how you, do you see any opportunities here or uh, what are you doing at this point? Uh, right now, uh, well, let's, let's speak to the, um, Delivery curbside pickup model right now. That's going to work for some people when they have critical mass of, of residents in their area or, uh, you know, buildings with many tenants in them. And, and you know, in, in a city area where there's a bunch of people that live um, that's in walking distance. Um, I just didn't see it as being a fit for me. That's not to disparage all the people that are doing it. I'm ordering it every day that I can from my friends and taking out. I can't wait to get some food from some of my buddies tonight for dinner. Mm -hmm. However, I don't see it working for my model. Um, it is, it is basically, it's, it's, it's opening an empty restaurant. It's opening to God. You know, you've got to have at least one to two people cooking. You got to have the food product out. You got to have it ready to go. And then you got to fire it up, get it done and get it to the people. What if nobody calls? Now you've got more money going in the garbage or, or, or going to the soup kitchen or whatever that was a frozen product that could have been saved and utilized. Uh, you know, when and if this thing comes out. So that just didn't work for me and my team personally. Um, however, we are uh, looking strongly at doing a, uh, everybody's familiar with the meal prep, um, the the healthy meal prep, the I need whatever it is, yes, yes. four ounces of protein and two ounces of, you know, there's some really, really successful, excuse me, models out there 
uh, that are doing that currently. Um, we're going to go with Nani's going to make your meal prep for you, and we're going to we're going to roll out a plan in the next 24 hours to um, provide you fresh cooked frozen meals. So we are going to produce the food, freeze it, and deliver it to your homes, uh, deliver it to your businesses, whatever the situation is. Um, the reason being, and, it, and it's a 48-hour delay, is I can now control my labor and my food costs directly. There's no guesswork. Um, I don't know if I'll be making six chicken parms on Monday or 600, um, but I can tell you that our pricing has been reevaluated to minimize our profit lines and really cover our labor and our food costs and get people to work and feed people. Um, you know, there's certainly got to pay rent still, got to do those things. So, um, but, you know, I think we're going to go with a baseline. We're, we're finalizing this right after I get off the phone with you, actually, but we're, we're finalizing the uh, pricing structure. And I think we're going to be right around seven to eight dollars an item for an entree. Um, and then there will be discounts if you buy 10, 20, whatever. The first buddy that I told the story to wants to buy a hundred for charity. So we immediately put a buy a, buy a meal for someone option in. If you're, uh, you know, whatever, your mother is living out in North Collins, which my, my 82 year old mother is, is pretty much alone. Her and my sister, when my sister goes to work, she's alone, but I can't go see her because I don't know if I have the virus and she's 82. Uh, so I can send her, I can go on my new website that's coming out, um, stockthefreezer.com or Osteria or Bellagio and click on it and just send her whatever, a dozen meals. Um, obviously, my mother's going to be uh, the, the one that's helping us with it. Uh, but I'm saying if you want to send it to your nephew, your son, your cousin, with a mission to whoever you want. Um, and we, you know, my chicken parm is normally substantially more than that. So it's a smaller portion, but it's a substantial portion. It's six ounces of chicken. And, you know, we're, we're trying to keep the, the food portions to 12 to 14 ounces, so, uh, which is pretty substantial. So you're using the same recipes that you use at uh, Osteria? Yeah. Yes. They will be our recipes, our sauces, our, you know, our cooks making it. The, the hope is we're, we're starting out. We're going to launch the website this weekend. Uh, and our plan is to pr procure whatever additional products we need and cook on Monday and distribute on Tuesday. Uh, and then it's a 48 hour window. So if you order on Monday, you'll get it delivered on Wednesday, et cetera. Um, I hope to God that the, the system crashes because of so much action and I'll figure it out from there. Yeah, I um, so too. I, you know, I Are do you have uh, alternative plans in place. I don't want to, I don't want to speak to that too much because I don't know how much I'll be able to help my brethren. But if, you know, if it comes down to it, I know a lot of guys with a, with a fridge full of free freezer full of food and a bunch of able-bodied cooks and servers that would be happy to, to work on this project for us. I, you know, what I would love to do is evolve that website to, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, and then after that, bring in some of my friends and add them to the mix and say, okay, whatever, pick a taco guy that's a friend, I got several, or, or whatever it is, and come up with bulk items and individual meal items and ship them to, our, to the people. And, and if we build the system, it just might work. I, I, I have no idea, Tony, um, but I feel pretty good about it. I got some pretty smart people around me, uh, and, and I think we got an outside shot if we're first to market and we, and we make this work. Um, I don't know. It, 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 I don't know any of it. Well, I, 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 let's talk a little bit about what you're offering because um, when whenever I went to Osteria, I looked forward to the sauce. My my being Italian and and growing up with sauce, uh, I'm very picky about the sauce, and there's very few restaurants that I ever well, uh, enjoy their every, sauce. Every day, I, I always take second best. Any Italian that comes into my joint, I'm looking for second best because you know <laughs> mom's is always first. That's the deal. Well, right? you, you definitely um, are second so best I, with me. If not, sometimes even better. Sometimes I make mine wrong. <laughs> no, I'll, tell, man, I'll tell your mother that. I'll tell you that. I did that once 25 years ago. It took me two years to get more sauce. Um, so real quick, we're, we're not final on any of this stuff yet, but what we're doing is we're starting out with a small menu, um, and it's going to be uh, a couple different kinds of lasagna because it's pre-ordered. So we're going to do our bolognese lasagna, our chicken lasagna, and then a vegetarian lasagna, individual and large portion is like half pan as well. Um, we'll have a 
bolognese and pasta. We'll have a spaghetti and meatball. We'll have a chicken parm, an eggplant parm. Uh, we're adding a, uh, a grilled chicken and broccolini and probably some risotto as a starch. We're trying to finalize that. Uh, you know, pan of lasagna is uh, 39 bucks. An individual is eight. Um, you know, a uh, thing of eggplant parm, 29 bucks. Chick- pan of chicken parm, 30 bucks. Um, you know, trying to keep it really, really reasonable. You know, sides are four bucks. My meatballs six bucks in the restaurant. We're selling them for four um, and under this format, just because we just want to cover the cost, the travel expense, the delivery, and and get some labor behind it, and, and get these people working. How um and, and this goes eight bucks. And this goes live. Again. This goes live tomorrow. Uh, we are. Yeah, we were hoping to launch today at eleven o'clock. We've got too much work to do. Uh, diligently working on it all day. We work. I mean, we're sitting here. We got nothing else to do. So we're home uh, and we're working from home and we're working on the website and working on getting the right pictures loaded and the descriptions and all of those things. Um, we, how we, how we define the delivery area is a little bit of a problem. My first instinct is to say all of Cattaraugus and Erie County. I, I just can't do that at a no fee delivery. It's just not going to work. So maybe it's volunteers delivering some of that stuff. Maybe it's, you know, a, a central pickup for, the outlying towns. I, I, I just don't know yet. I think we're going to probably have to start a little smaller and grow it. Uh, eventually, I'd love to have, a, you know, have this being shipped out with dry ice all over the place from FedEx or whatever, if it works. Well, that's great. So at least initially, first of all, when we say tomorrow, we're talking about March 20th, 2020, for those listening. And, um, uh, as far as where you begin, the smaller area that you would be uh, that you would be shipping this uh, to would be the Buffalo and surrounding suburbs. Yeah, I I mean I I live in West Valley, all Ellicottville area, and I, and I'm going to be in Buffalo producing the food. So the way our system set up, it's by mile, right? So by, by miles radius. So if I do ten miles from Osteria, that gives me a pretty good pretty good group of people to start with and then what i would do is add like i said what is it it's western west seneca orchard park springville ellicottville salamanca olean and then from there if we can go farther than that we will but we'll, let's see what the demand is in that in that category first so just to clarify the, the website will be up tomorrow the 20th um deliveries won't start until tuesday Okay, and it's stockthefreezer.com. Um, stockthefreezer.com. It will be on Osteria, Buffalo.com. It'll be on Bellagio, EBL.com. Um, but that will be what it drives it all to. Very good. And uh, sign me up, man. I'm ordering. And I see you could also donate a meal. So even if uh, they don't deliver near your house, you could donate a meal. You know, so many people are, are, are you know, that's the beauty of our area and certainly the whole country right now. But our area is just so giving and we we are none of us are there are very few of us that are wealthy rich whatever we can't afford what we do give sometimes but everybody's lining up i had a i had a a guy who was just a guest uh show up to osteria the last day we were going to be open and this guy doesn't have the money to do this and he handed me an envelope for each of my three bartenders with a hundred dollar bill and he asked he 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 asked me for anonymity uh i just thought that gesture was beautiful Yesterday, I had a gentleman from Ellicottville call me uh, and say, I'm giving $5,000. My friends and I are going to give $5,000 to the service industry people in Western, in, in Ellicottville, New York. Now, there's a whole lot more to that. And you can't, he, their first instinct is, guys, they don't know. They want to take care of the service to take care of them. And here's your money. Well, the reality is that servers are probably going to make more money than cooks in unemployment because now the tips are all being declared, right? So there's a disparagement there. So I said, well, we have to, we have to give the money to the back of the house employees as well. And then you do the math and it's going to be, you know, whatever, 25 bucks a person. Is it tax? Is it not? Probably not, but you know what I'm saying? Now it's not as much of an impact. Um, So they are going to, we don't want to discourage it. We're we're going to try and work with the, um, the, uh, 
Family Meal Hospitality Trust Group out of Buffalo that Jill Gedra and a bunch of great people started. Uh, and there's a GoFundMe page that they started for the service industry people. But what they're doing is they're qualifying it. So everybody's got to submit two of their, their, their last two paychecks and then their unemployment stub, I believe, and figure out, all right, well, you're down 200, whatever it is, right? So we're, and, and the one next to you is only down 50. So we're going to get you back up to where we're all kind of in, in the same boat is the plan. Um, I think it's kind of cool. The, the give a meal faction in, in the website that we're talking about, that came from a buddy of mine that I was talking about this idea when, you know what, I'll take the first hundred that you make and I want to send them to response to love, which is a, you know, a, a near and dear soup kitchen on the east side of Buffalo to us. Um, I thought that was just fantastic. So that, you know, I, we are going to have an option on the website to buy one meal by 10, by 20, by 50, by a hundred, whatever you want to do. Um, and if you buy a hundred, it's a discounted price, obviously. Um, because it's all about the volume. We, if we don't do volume with this, this won't work. Right. Um, but if we do volume, we can do it at low prices. I mean, eight bucks for, for a 12, 14 ounce piece of lasagna. It's a smoking deal. You can't eat at McDonald's for eight bucks and you know, we're, we're trying to feed people good food. Yeah, no doubt. And believe me, if you've uh, ever been to Osteria, it is a great food. Um, I, and, and Nick, you had said it, we're all in this together. Uh, it would be great uh, if, if uh, people start buying so that you could start hiring your 60 employees back. I mean, the sooner the better. Uh, we're seeing the layoffs happen all over, all over the country. And um, yeah. uh, it, it's, the, it's the small business owner that's the engine of this country. And we need to uh, come together and just help each other. So, Look out, brother. So Look I'm... Out. I'm I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing, Nick. Uh, any any final comments before we end this? Uh, right now, we're just hoping to figure it out, man. Uh, it looks like I just got a, a test order on uh, drfreezer.com. Look at that. Let Nani make food for you. Spread the word. Scream it from the mountaintops. Get everybody to this website. I'd love to crash the damn thing in the next 48 hours and have to figure it out. So, uh uh, that's it, man. And I thank you for reaching out to me. You've been a big help and a huge friend. And frankly, I think back to a couple of conversations we had about, uh, oh, we'll be fine if we make it to March. Well, we made it to March and here we are. Uh, and we're going to be okay based on the changes that you helped me make in my business model over the last six months. And I really appreciate that. Well, I thank you. Uh, it, it takes a great student and you're, you're a very good listener and you're, you're willing to make changes. And uh, Stock the Freezer is another example of how you're willing to make changes quickly and uh, very nimbly. So uh, congratulations to you. Uh, anybody, everybody who's listening, please go to StockTheFreezer.com and uh, order, order a meal. The lasagna is fantastic. That's something you do want in your freezer. And also uh, donate a meal as well. And, and Nick, did you say where those meals are going? Uh, well, we're going to leave a, right now where we're at is we're going to leave a suggestion box. Certainly you can send them to family members, things like that. If you want to send 20 to the mission, send 20 to the mission, we'll get them to the mission. Um, but what we're hoping for is we get a pretty good sizable amount and we're going to try and distribute them accordingly. Um, whether it be to restaurant needy employees or, you know, soup kitchens or, you know, like I said, the uh, Cataraugus community uh, in community center in um, Salamanca or whatever. Like I said, the response to love is a favorite of ours or the city mission, or we will take all suggestions and it would be, it would give us great joy to bring them wherever people want. You're a good man, Nick. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. And uh, I, uh, I truly appreciate your time. Stay safe. Uh, hope the family stays safe. And um, I uh, look forward to getting back to Osteria and uh, eventually uh, having having to sit down and, and uh, being surrounded by a lot of people and not worried about it anymore. All right, brother. I appreciate it, man. I'll see you on the other side. All right, pal. Take care. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.